The world is currently witnessing a remarkable surge in orbital rocket launches, with SpaceX undeniably leading the charge. Amidst this boom, it's worth revisiting an organization that once aimed to take a radically different approach, Spin Launch. A few years ago, this company captured attention with an innovative concept that stood out from traditional rocket technology and even hinted at promising potential. However, as groundbreaking as their approach seemed, the journey has likely proven more challenging than anticipated. Many hurdles stand in the way of realizing such a bold vision, so the question remains. Is Spin Launch still committed to this unconventional method, especially when traditional rocket technology continues to dominate the market? Or have they just pivoted toward a more practical plan for their future? Join us in today's episode of Great SpaceX as we explore the current status of Spin Launch and uncover the possibilities that lie ahead for this ambitious endeavor. Founded in 2014 in California by Jonathan Yaney, who stepped down this year and was succeeded by David Wren, Spin Launch has taken a groundbreaking approach to space travel. Instead of relying on conventional rockets, Spin Launch seeks to harness kinetic energy to propel payloads into orbit, an innovative concept that has sparked widespread interest. Central to this approach is their flagship invention, the Accelerator, commonly referred to as the Spin Launch System. The Accelerator is unlike any traditional launch vehicle. It resembles a large snail-shaped structure with an appearance akin to a clock. Inside, the system operates in a vacuum to eliminate air resistance. A carbon fiber tether is connected to a powerful electric motor at the center, with the other end attached to the payload. When the tether spins the payload at high speed under centrifugal force, it is eventually released into a launch tunnel. Here, the payload breaks through a thin membrane separating the vacuum of the accelerator from the external environment, allowing it to soar into the atmosphere. This method aims to achieve sufficient altitude and velocity for the payload to either reach orbit or surpass the densest layers of Earth's atmosphere, after which the payload takes over its own propulsion. The spin launch system has several theoretical advantages. First and foremost, it eliminates the need for rocket fuel during launch. Rocket fuel represents a significant cost and environmental burden in traditional spaceflight. Removing it not only reduces launch expenses, but also lessens environmental impact. Additionally, the absence of onboard fuel for the launch stage allows payloads to conserve fuel for use after surpassing the densest part of the atmosphere, potentially extending mission capabilities. Another advantage is the system's simplicity. The accelerator's straightforward design requires minimal effort to construct and maintain. Between launches, only basic refurbishments are needed, such as replacing the launch membrane and adjusting the tether. This rapid turnaround contrasts with the extensive preparations and recovery efforts often required for rocket launches. Consequently, Spin Launch anticipates each launch costing as little as 500,000 US dollars, a fraction of current rocket-based prices, which could attract a wide range of customers. However, while promising in theory, the Spin Launch system faces significant challenges when applied in practice. One major hurdle is scaling up the facility. Current accelerators, including a 33-meter model in New Mexico and a smaller 12-meter prototype in California, are only suitable for suborbital launches. Achieving orbital velocity and altitude will require a much larger accelerator, approximately 100 meters in diameter, posing engineering and financial challenges. Additionally, their current achievements are far from meeting orbital standards. Since their debut launch in 2021 and nine subsequent tests in 2022, Spin Launch has only achieved an altitude of 10 kilometers and a payload velocity of 1,600 kilometers per hour. These results fall drastically short of the orbital requirements of 300 kilometers in altitude and 25,000 kilometers per hour in speed. The substantial impact of air resistance on the payload during ascent demonstrates the technical challenges Spin Launch must overcome. Operationally, using kinetic energy introduces significant risks. The intense forces generated during acceleration and the abrupt transition from the vacuum inside the accelerator to the external environment can damage payloads. This limitation makes the system more suitable for solid fuel payloads, yet the industry trend leans heavily toward liquid fuel propulsion systems. Furthermore, ensuring that sensitive instruments and components can withstand these forces remains a major obstacle. Location selection is another critical issue. Although the system's design allows for a relatively simple expansion, finding suitable construction sites has proven difficult. Spin Launch initially targeted Hawaii, a strategic location near the equator 
and ideal for launches due to its geographical advantages. However, local opposition arose over concerns about safety, environmental impact, and the potential threat to Hawaii's status as a premier tourist destination. Following setbacks in Hawaii, spin launch shifted its focus to Alaska, which offers fewer population density concerns but lacks the equatorial advantage. However, they faced resistance there as well, due to limited prospects for job creation and economic benefits. Attempts to establish a facility along the U.S. coast have met regulatory and environmental hurdles, while plans to expand internationally remain in limbo. Despite these challenges, Spin Launch continues to push forward with its vision. The potential for cost-effective environmentally friendly launches is too significant to ignore. Addressing the structural, operational, and logistical limitations of their system will be crucial to achieving their long-term goals. What are your thoughts on Spin Launch's innovative but controversial approach? Are there other drawbacks or risks we haven't considered? Share your views in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more updates on the future of space exploration. In contrast to the challenges faced by Spin Launch, the rocket industry spearheaded by SpaceX continues to demonstrate unparalleled potential. SpaceX's dominance in the aerospace sector is largely due to its Falcon rockets, particularly the Falcon 9. Over the past three years, Falcon 9 has become the most frequently launched rocket globally, surpassing an incredible 100 launches in a single year. Its remarkable flexibility allows it to meet a wide variety of customer needs. While the Falcon 9's price tag of a $69 million per launch is higher than Spin Launch's theoretical cost, it is still far more affordable than other competing rockets. The Falcon Heavy, though launched less often, remains the go-to option for high-profile and demanding missions. One of the Falcon rocket system's greatest strengths is its reusability. SpaceX has reused boosters more than 370 times, with a single booster achieving a record of 23 launches. This capability has enabled SpaceX to dramatically reduce costs, reinforcing its market dominance. Looking ahead, SpaceX plans to further enhance the capabilities of the Falcon rockets, particularly the Falcon 9, increasing both the number of launches and the lifespan of its reusable components. Complementing the Falcon system, is Dragon, a spacecraft renowned for its reliability. Currently, Dragon is the only U.S. vehicle capable of carrying humans into space, further solidifying SpaceX's edge over competitors. SpaceX's current systems already outshine the competition, but its future lies with Starship. Following the successful sixth flight of Starship in mid-November, SpaceX is making steady progress toward operational readiness. With its massive size, Starship will be capable of carrying hundreds of tons into orbit, far surpassing the payload capacities of spin launch and other rockets. Starship's groundbreaking feature is its full reusability, a step beyond the Falcon's partial reusability. This innovation is expected to slash costs, potentially bringing launch prices down to as little as $2 million per launch. While this is higher than spin launch's projected costs, Starship offers unmatched capabilities and scalability. Full reusability will also enable Starship to achieve unprecedented launch rates, with plans to scale from 4 launches this year to 25 next year, and eventually to hundreds of launches annually, even progressing to daily operations. Behind SpaceX, other companies are also advancing rapidly. Rocket Lab is expanding its portfolio with the Electron rocket with its upcoming Neutron launch vehicle. ULA has introduced its Vulcan Centaur rocket and Blue Origin is preparing to launch the highly anticipated new Glenn. The rapid advancements in the rocket industry are increasingly narrowing the competitive window for spin launch, making it clear that traditional rockets remain the leading choice for space access. Is there a better way for spin launch to realize its potential without letting this groundbreaking concept go to waste? In my opinion, the answer may lie in focusing on off-world applications, such as supporting early stage missions on the moon or Mars. Spin Launch's unique strengths align well with the challenges of establishing a foothold on other celestial bodies. For instance, the simplicity of its construction makes it ideal for environments where tools, resources, and personnel are limited. A Spin Launch system could be deployed with relative ease compared to traditional launch pads, which are far more complex to construct. Another advantage is the system's fuel-free approach. 
In the early stages of lunar or Martian colonization, the ability to avoid relying on fuel production or transportation would be a major benefit. This independence could prove vital in scenarios where self-sufficient fuel creation is still in its infancy. Spin Launch's most significant obstacle on Earth, the atmosphere, would be negligible or non-existent on the Moon or Mars. In such conditions, the system could operate more efficiently and fully showcase its potential. Tasks like sample returns would be an excellent fit for Spin Launch, enabling the delivery of materials into orbit for collection by spacecraft without requiring traditional rockets. Rather than competing with established Earth-based systems, Spin Launch could find its niche by partnering with NASA, SpaceX, or other organizations aiming for the Moon or Mars. By integrating into these ambitious programs, Spin Launch could demonstrate its value as a key player in humanity's next giant leap. Right now, with its uncertain future, Spin Launch may need to make a decision soon. The slow progress since 2022 highlights the challenges with their system. Competing with the rocket industry at this stage is clearly not the best course of action, especially as rocket launches remain central to space exploration for the foreseeable future. However, adapting the spin launch concept to support primary systems could be a strategic move. Leveraging the unique strengths of each system may well be the winning formula for advancing space exploration. Do you agree with me? In any case, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.